welcome to another Dragon Plus live stream where we discuss more of the content going into each issue of Dragon Plus magazine, as well as talk about how that content can help the design, the development, and the playing of your game. Uh, we also enjoy using this live stream to uh, take a look at some gameplay demos as well. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we ran through Betrayal at uh, Baldur's Gate, which uh, my guest today had a very strong hand in both the design and the development, uh, Chris Dupuy. Uh, so for folks who might not be aware of my esteemed colleague and guest, <laughs> Mr. Dupuy, who are you and what is your role here at Wizards of the Coast? Sure, thanks Bart. Uh, I'm Chris Dupuy, I'm a game producer here on the digital licensing team, uh, but I started off uh, as a game designer on the D&D team. Uh, recently, I've moved into a different team, and it's very sad to not sit next to Bart and the rest of the team anymore. I can see why that would be sad. <laughs> I don't need, get to hear <laughs> Shelly and Tito banter back and forth all day. Uh, so yeah, I, I worked as a game designer uh, here at Wizards of the Coast for the past uh, five or six years. I've worked on things like Dungeon Command, uh, Betrayal at Baldur's Gate. Uh, I've also worked on Hero Escape and Risk Legacy. Mm. Uh, on Betrayal at Baldur's Gate, I was on the design team, and I was also the lead developer. Uh, so I spent about three months in the trenches doing playtests every other day and developing haunts and tearing them up and trying them again. <laughs> <laughs> but I also worked on uh, develop developing on the adventure system, uh, not specifically this title, the last title, Temple of Elma Until uh, Evil. I was one of the developers on that when we designed that in-house. Uh, and then uh, WizKids has designed and developed uh, this new version, Tomb of Annihilation, based on the latest campaign from the TRPG. So we do have Tomb of Annihilation, the board game, some of the physical components we've unboxed and put out on the table, if you're not aware. Uh, the Tomb of Annihilation Adventure System board game is released, I want to say, tomorrow. tomorrow. Nice. Yes, so right around the corner. Uh, Already out now is the Tomb of Annihilation uh, game um, from BCOM Studios, Tales from Candlekeep, Tomb of Annihilation. Yep. And that we will also be showcasing some playthrough a little later on today. Yeah, so the uh, the D and D adventure system games, which is what all of this is based on, uh, first came out in two thousand ten with uh, Castle Ravenloft, and I'm sure many of you have probably played it. Uh, it started, and you can see the boxes behind us with Castle Ravenloft, Wrath of a Shardalon, uh, Legend of Dritzt, Temple of Elemental Evil, and now ne later this week, uh, Tomb of Annihilation. Each box uh, is a self-contained campaign, but it's also an over uh, a, a system that goes between uh, the different games. So once you have two or three of these games, you can take the heroes from one adventure and send them in the other, the next adventure. You can take monsters from previous adventures and throw them into the new adventure. You can create your own campaigns with them uh, using the modular tile sets. Uh, you can have Castle Ravenloft tiles with Tomb of Annihilation tiles and create all sorts of awesome home group brew adventures. And that's really uh, part of why we were really excited about the adventure system games mm -hmm. and also about Tales from Candlekeep. Uh, the reason the game isn't called the Tomb of Annihilation digital board game is because you know, we want to look to look at this as uh, as in uh, another version of the Adventure System games, where Tales from Candlekeep is the way that the Adventure System is moving into the digital realm. Mm -hmm. So you have the physical board game where you and uh, you and I and three of five of our friends can play on the table, or you can jump into Tales from Candlekeep on your PC and play this adventure, this campaign uh, in the digital world with fully animated 3D models, a 3D environment. Uh, really cool audio and sound and really kind of immerse yourself in the adventure. Um, so we're really excited about the new release of the, the physical board game from WizKids. It'll be out at your friendly local game store this week. Uh, but we are also excited about uh, Tales from Candlekeep, a digital version. So uh, depending on what your flavor for playing D&D board games, we've got a lot of different options for you this week. So uh, again, we'll be going a bit more into the Tales from Candlekeep playthrough in, in a bit. Uh, we also have a, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, we have a couple of codes uh, to give away in a raffle for, for our viewers in chat, which will provide uh, the entire Tales from Candlekeep game. Yep. Is that correct? Yep. Right. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll do a raffle later on in chat. Uh, we have rules, apparently. Do, or do we know how we're doing the raffle? Oh, we're Sean? just open. If you're in chat and uh, you want to join the raffle once we open it up, 
Uh, you'll just uh, we'll we'll have instructions in chat. Yes, it's very easy. Yeah, exclamation and point raffle. Ex is that how you do it? Is <laughs> yeah. that, okay, don't do it yet though because it's not open. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the uh, the Steam code will unlock the game in Steam, available for PC and Mac. Uh, so if any of you are lucky to get it, you'll be able to play right after this stream. Otherwise, you guys can go to str to Steam today and download it. Uh, today is actually the last day of the fifteen percent off launch promo. Mm -hmm. So right now you can get it at fifteen percent off, which uh, don't quote me, I believe is like thirteen fifty nine. I think it's normally a fourteen ninety nine price point, uh, which honestly for uh, for the content that you're getting for the uh, the board game uh, is really, really awesome. And like I said, the goal eventually is to start looking at other versions of the adventure system mm. and integrating those as well. Super cool. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's on Steam right now. You can go to the Steam store right now, put it on your wish list. Uh, or pick it up, or wait until uh, the raffle and see if you can get a copy. I was going to say, yes. <laughs> uh, and if folks do have questions along the way, uh, particularly about Tales from Candlekeep, uh, please feel free to put them in chat. Uh, just preface them with question, and we will have them up on our screen and try to address them as we go along. Uh, but before we get into to the various things, uh, I did want to ask, uh, you, as mentioned, you had a strong development hand in Betrayal at Baldur's Gate, uh, and you also participated in a uh, charity event this last weekend where <laughs> you were playing that? Yes. How did that go? It was awesome. Uh, so we went, uh, we went up to Seattle uh, in um, some really old building, and I, I can't remember what, I think it was like the Daughters of the American Republic building. Mm -hmm. uh, it's this supposedly haunted building. Uh, Rainy City Happenings put it on. Uh, it's a group that focuses on uh, getting people together in uh, fun events in Seattle to kind of get over that Seattle freeze that everyone talks about, but I've never actually experienced. Uh, the Seattle freeze is not uh, referring to the weather. It's more of... Except uh, for that one day a year. <laughs> Surface friendly, but then no one ever follows through on actual social plans. Is, is this way? why we never get together on the weekends? That, there's that and the uh, small children that... Uh, well, I think that would help. Well, I think that would help. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but it was in the Capitol Hill neighborhood, which is a super cool neighborhood in, in Seattle. Yeah, and they had, uh, they had a bunch of volunteers there putting the, the event together. They all dressed in period outfits. It felt like you were walking into the house from Betrayal at House on the Hill. Mm. They had a silent auction. Uh, when you went upstairs, there were something like 30 tables all set up with Betrayal uh, at uh, House on the Hill. And then uh, they had some uh, tables that they auctioned up at the top uh, in the because they had like a stage mm -hmm. uh, where you could play with myself and Mike Selnicker, who was one of the developers on the original game. Uh, and all of the proceeds went to charity. We ended up raising about five thousand dollars for breast cancer research. Oh, nice. And so not only was it an amazing evening with a ton of awesome people, uh, but we also got to uh, benefit a really great charity. So. Overall, it was the highlight of my weekend. Super cool. Yeah. And you were, you were uh, play, playing through a Betrayal at Baldur's Gate or Betrayal at... Uh, oh, no, I was playing was Betrayal at Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate. Yes. What was, uh, what was your haunt? My haunt was... Oh, my God. Uh, hang on, hang on. I had a long weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Were you the traitor? No, I was not the traitor. Uh, the first one was a cooperative haunt because Betrayal at Baldur's Gate has more cooperative haunts than... Uh, than um, uh, betrayal at House on the Hill. Yeah. We played twice, and oh my God, this this is going to sound awesome, uh, awful, but I cannot remember what the haunt was. Well, we'll make one up. Yeah. Which uh, haunt? Yeah. It was it was the Minotaur haunt, obviously. <laughs> when you're trapped in the catacombs with the Minotaur. People remember the Minotaur haunt. I know. I, I know. That's because that's because the first time Shelley went through, we murdered her as the Minotaur, <laughs> and she never stopped talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe 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 that's why. But uh, but uh, but yeah. So uh, oh, I remember. Yeah. Okay, so there was a mad wizard that uh -huh. had an iron golem that was trying to destroy the city, and so you had to stop the cultists, protect the wizard from the iron golem, lure her her up to sorcerer sundries, and uh, and uh, cure her of her madness before you all died. So there's cultists, there's an iron golem, uh, there's all sorts of crazy stuff going on. So And did you succeed or did the iron golem destroy everything? No, we succeeded. We had, uh, in, in true D&D fashion, yeah. like everyone dove into the catacombs. We were we had different people staked out in different areas. Someone had the Eye of Vecna holding uh. the cultists off and uh, they, they were sacrificing themselves to keep the iron golem back. It was... It was awesome, and I couldn't remember it for the life of me. But yes, no, it was it was a great adventure. Uh, the people at my table actually uh, each donated one hundred and forty dollars for the charity uh, to to play, and hopefully they had as good of a time as I did. 
because it was super, super fun. I've seen the pictures. Uh, it did look fun. Uh, we were sorry we missed it. but uh, Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, I kept texting time. Shelley during the event. I know. <laughs> uh, and, yeah. Uh, but speaking of cooperative play, uh, I did want to, to jump back towards the adventure system. Sure. Uh, again, if you are not aware of the adventure system board games, uh, as you mentioned, started in Castle Ravenloft 2010, uh, and one of the things that I appreciated about the game, I love the Adventure System game, um, one of the things I appreciated is the fact that it's less competitive play and more cooperative play. And the design of the system is that the game itself, the engine, is so well engineered to run the monsters and the encounters and ultimately a villain if that comes up against the players cooperatively and dynamically and, and in ways that, that makes it pretty, uh, uh, the, the replayability, it's, it tends to be different time, time and again. Yeah, when we, uh, when we eventually want to introduce D&D uh, &D to our daughter, I think this is going to be one of the ways that we, that we do it because mm -hmm. you, if you have someone uh, monitoring the draw decks and kind of dealing with the AI, uh, the game runs itself. All you have is you have a bunch of different powers in front of you and you're just choosing which power you're going to do uh, at any given moment. Uh, and because it came out in 2010, mm -hmm. you'll notice that it's inspired a lot by D&D 4th Edition. There's utility powers, there's at-will powers, and there's daily powers. And one of the questions we had when we continued to put this uh, adventure system out, because it's a very popular system, uh, it's, like I said, it's been around for seven, seven years, years now, yep. uh, and it still sells really, really well. People are still enjoying it. The question was, were we going to uh, kind of move it forward into the 5e uh, mentality, the 5e uh, terminology. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, we, ultimately, we decided not to because it is a self-contained system and we always want that sort of backwards compatibility. And so that's why when you jump into Tomb of Annihilation, you'll, you'll start to see some of that fourth edition terminology that, that uh, you might be used to from playing previously. Um, but uh, we're still, we're really excited about it. It's a really great system tried and true and we continue to put uh, games out and they continue to sell really, really well. Um, so yeah, the, the basis of the game is you start as a bunch of adventurers and you start at on a tile and uh, the campaign book has uh, 12 to 15 different adventures mm -hmm. and you set up your draw deck. So you'll set up the tiles and between tile 8 and 12 you'll normally get your target tile. So you'll shuffle those around so that way you'll know between 8 and 12 you're going to start to move the adventure forward so that way it's not at the bottom of the deck. And you set up your stack off to the side and every time you go to end your, end your turn on an unexplored edge you'll flip the next tile over and you'll put it down and if you have monsters on the monster spaces you'll draw those right out from the monster deck. So you'll draw a monster card, it has AI right on it, and you'll put it in front of you, and, uh, and then at the end of your turn, you're gonna uh, follow the instructions on the monster's uh, cards. And so the game is running itself. There's a little bit of upkeep from, uh, from your end, but, uh, but the game is running itself, and then we go around the table, and we're, it's all about management. It's mm -hmm. all about economy. Right. Uh, whether it's action economy, you only have one action that you can do a turn. You can move, and then you can do another action. And then knowing that, you know, I have the four-armed gargoyle and the skeleton key coming at me on my turn, but they're not going to activate until my turn again. So Bart's got time to deal with them before they attack again, unless Bart happens to draw that same monster. Because when monsters are controlled by two different players, there's multiple minions on, uh, minis on the board, they're going to activate on both players' turns. So suddenly, it starts to snowball out of control. So there's a, it, it, when you talk about cooperative play, like this is like the de facto cooperative D&D &D game right. because you have to work together. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, the game's going to overwhelm you. But I will say, unlike some other Dungeons & Dragons expressions, there are times where you do want to split the party. Oh, absolutely. Where you, where you want to explore various edges of the, the adventure. Well, yeah, because like, um, so there's, there's an encounter system built into the game. And the encounter system, I like to think of it, is the timer. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't let you lollygag. You're on an adventure. You've got a limited amount of time to complete this adventure. You can't just go all night and expect Roz and he to still be hanging out waiting for you. Right. Uh, so if you don't explore during your turn, you're going to get an encounter card. Normally, encounter cards are bad. But if you explore, and it's a tile with a white arrow, it's a good tile. If it's a tile with a black arrow, it's a challenging uh, tile. So 
If it's got a black arrow, you'll also draw an encounter card. So if you explore, there's a good chance you won't get an encounter card, but sometimes you might get the, a monster on the new tile mm -hmm. and an encounter card. But it's all about that push and that management to uh, continue on through the adventure and try to manage the hit points that you have. So everyone, when we start, no matter how many players we have, whether it's one player or five players, everyone has t the, the group shares two healing surges. And as you lose hit points, if you run out of hit points, you tip your character over, the monsters ignore you. Uh, but then when it comes back to your turn, if you haven't been healed by your friends, you flip back up and you lose one of your healing surges. If you would flip back up and there aren't any healing surges, you guys have lost. So when we get to a point where, you know, I'm dragon bait and I fall, and we know that we've got, you know, your, sh your turn, Shelly's turn, and Bart's and Greg's turn, and then we're done, like there's that added craziness right at the end of the game because you run out of those healing surges. And uh, 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 Tales from Candlekeep really helps to evoke that sense mm -hmm. of urgency. So like Betrayal, once you get to the edge of an unexplored tile and you put down a new tile, is your turn over? Can you continue to explore as much as possible? Uh, no. So you... Uh, um, once you get to the uh, edge of a tile, mm -hmm. you can still do things. So if you move and you get to the edge of a tile, you can't move past it. You can't right. explore and then keep moving. Mm -hmm. But you could still attack a monster. Let's say there was a goblin over here. Mm -hmm. I could come and move over here and then shoot him with an arrow if that's right. a character with a ranged weapon. Uh, but once the exploration uh, happens, that's basically the end of your turn. Mm -hmm. So the phases are the hero phase, where you're doing your two actions. The exploration phase, where if you're adjacent to an, uh, an unexplored edge, a new tile will come down. Then the encounter phase, which is either if you didn't explore or if you found a challenging tile. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the villain phase, where any of the monsters you control, including the ones that just popped up, will activate and normally try to pummel you, like monsters do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and you mentioned there's different uh, adventures uh, within the the board game. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, a little bit different from from the betrayal system, where based on where you are and what you're doing, it, it's going to be uh, indicated on the grid what. Uh, adventure you're playing through, what haunt you're, you've triggered. Yes. How does it work in the adventure system? Uh, so in the adventure, so in, in Betrayal, you never know what you're getting. Right. Uh, it's all based on when the haunt is going to trigger, based on the room and the omen. But right. in the adventure system, you know what your, you know what your story is. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you're just going to pick Adventure 8 because that's how far you got before, or you just want a random adventure. You know, I want to run away from the stone juggernaut, so that's the haunt, we're, that's the adventure we're going to do. Uh, you can choose whatever you want. In later, uh, in later uh, uh, adventure system games, we introduced a campaign mechanic. Right. That was uh, Temple of Elemental Evil. Is right. that when it first came out? Yeah. So that was the last. Uh, that was the last adventure game that we designed in house. Uh, we introduced a campaign mechanic where there was an advanced deck and a basic deck. And as you advanced in the campaign, as you went through each adventure, depending on how you did in that adventure, mm -hmm. the cards in each deck would change. So if you did really well, we would uh, we would take out uh, we would take out a good card and put a little bit more difficult card in to kind of balance things. Because if you're starting to get overpowered, we want the game to balance. So there's always that uh, back and forth. But if you got pummeled and you just barely made it. We'll throw some more gold. We'll throw a good magic item in. We'll also upgrade the monsters. So mm -hmm. there's monsters that come out of the monster deck, and you just won't play for, with them for the rest of the game. They'll use the same minis, but now there's empowered versions of them. Uh, and we introduced that in Temple of El Elemental Evil, and there's similar campaign mechanics in Tomb of Annihilation as well. Uh, so I'm really, I'm really proud of that, uh, that aspect of it. And it's another way that it further differentiates itself from something like Betrayal at House on the Hill, where it's, uh, where it's you jump in, you don't know what you're going to get, and just craziness ensues. This feels a little bit more like a D&D &D adventure where, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have a story. You know, we're starting in Port Nianzaru. We're going to talk to Jessamine. We're going to go get the mushroom she needs us to get. We're going to go deal with the undead scourge. We're going to go find uh, the witch doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're progressing. And actually, uh, this is the first game, and I'm just kind of rambling now. Please just <laughs> stop me if I'm going too crazy. But uh, with Tomb of Annihilation, this is the, um, the first game where there's two different types of of tiles. In Temple of Elemental Evil, we had village adventures where you used the double-sided tiles and flipped them over. Oh, that's right. But yes. in this game, there is a stack of jungle tiles and a stack of tomb tiles. And for the first eight or so adventures, maybe ten, you don't even touch the tomb tiles. They just stay in the game. 
because you're going through the jungles of Chult, trying to get to, get the, to tomb. the tomb. Uh, the yeah. moment you're in the Tomb of the Nine Gods, the jungle tiles, they go away. You pull out the tomb tiles, and it's just a whole new crazy adventure. There's more traps. The monsters get crazier. And now you're in the tomb with the Sarah. Uh, well, I, I definitely concur. It is a very good, different way to introduce some of the concepts of Dungeons & Dragons to new players. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if the game catches, it's, there's built-in mechanics to kind of continue that campaign. Uh, so you're not just breaking it out and playing the, the same game again, but you're advancing uh, what you're doing in, in a different way. And you, so. get, you get tied to your characters, too. Yeah. I mean, each of the games has five unique characters. Uh, they have, and I didn't pull out the character cards, unfortunately, uh, but they have front and back sides for the character cards on when you level them up. Mm -hmm. uh, and for the Adventure System game, uh, for the Tomb game, we've got them all here. We've got uh, Ashara, the uh, Aarakocra wizard, who's also in the Tomb of Annihilation module, and uh, the Idol Champions game as well. Mm -hmm. She's one of the playable heroes. We've got Dragon Bait, a Sorial Paladin, who's again in the module as well. Uh, we've got uh, Artist Simber, which most people know is the owner of the Ring of Winter, and he's uh, an important NPC from the module as well. Uh, we've got Kawasha, who's a guide in the module that can help you. Uh, and we've got uh, Birdsong, who's an original character uh, that was created for this board game and is also in Tales from Candlekeep, uh, which is based on the Tabaxi Minstrel Mini from uh, WizKids. We've been talking up uh, Kawash a lot. He's in uh, Adam Lee's Fiction for Dragon Plus. So ah. He's going to be on the cover of the, the October issue as well. So uh, Kawasha, incidentally, uh, since we're talking about him, is the only uh, hero from the board game that isn't yet in Tales from Candlekeep. Uh, the reason why was because the, the team over at BCOM actually threw this game together mm -hmm. in about five months' time, which if you know anything about video game development, at the size and scope of this game is ridiculous. Uh, they decided to hold off on doing Kawasha for the initial launch because, uh, as a druid, he can shapeshift. And mm -hmm. so there's a lot more animations uh, that go into making that character versus the rest of the character, which, as you play, you'll see that they've got a ton of animations going on. There's a ton of craziness going on. There are plans to introduce Kawasha. He's just not out for the initial launch. Well, we'll wait for him. Uh, and we'll, we'll get into, uh, let's get into to Tales from Candlekeep shortly. We did have one question coming in from Alpha Papa. Uh, if you're playing Tales from Candlekeep, does that spoil some of the Tomb of Annihilation storyline? So, I mean, any time that you're, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but any time that you are playing an extension of our uh, TRPG campaign, there are aspects of it that you will, you will potentially be spoiled on. Mm -hmm. uh, because all of the aspects of, all of the different iterations of the main campaign are inspired by that, uh, that Tomb of Annihil that, that uh, the TRPG campaign. That's why you'll see similar characters, like Kawasha or like Artis. Um, and it may spoil some aspects. I don't think that it's, it's, uh, it's spoiled territory where you should feel like you should stay away. Because what we like to think of uh, with the different ways of playing to, uh, these campaigns are everyone has a shared language. Mm -hmm. uh, when I play Tomb of Annihilation, the board game, and I start talking to you about uh, Kawasha and Artis and Dragon Bait, and you've played the TRPG campaign, oh man, I just ran into him. And, uh, you know, uh, my, my wife's playing Idol Champions, and she's like, oh, well, I'm playing with Ashara, and this is what she does. All right. of a sudden, even though we're not interacting with the same version of D&D at that moment, Moment, mm -hmm. We all have a shared language, and we can all uh, interact and uh, tell our stories, which is really what D and is all about. So, so you're immersed. You you would be immersed in the campaign setting for for sure. Mm -hmm. The jungle situations, and there, you know, the tomb does come up. Some of the monsters would have make an appearance in both as well. I, I don't believe it would spoil things like how to get through certain rooms in the tomb. Or, yeah. It's uh, solving certain traps in a way, but yeah, no. Like if if there's if there's a and I'm not saying there is, but if there's like a sliding floor in the Temple of the Nine Gods that Aserak has set up in a random room, uh, it, you're not going to see that exact mechanic in the uh, in the board game mm -hmm. because they are they are created from the same core design document, but they're sort of uh, designed in their own bubble. So they have the same core inspiration, but they all have their unique experiences. Mm. Well, why don't we uh, why don't we go into Tales from Candle? Sure. Uh, we we've uh, shown some of the minis and the cards. We'll we'll get some some uh, digital assets available online to get you a little better look. Uh, but once we go into Tales from Candlekeep itself, it should give you uh, a great look as well. Oh, so. I got locked out. <laughs> so if you give us a second, we'll log back in and uh, fire up the game. 
Yeah, you can go ahead and bring it up. Sean, let me know when we're up. So Tales from Candlekeep, like I said, yeah. is the digital version of the uh, Adventure System board game. So um, unlike, a, there we go. unlike a CRPG like Baldur's Gate, uh, you're not going to be able to create custom characters. You're going to have the characters that are given to you uh, in, the, uh, in the game. Uh, so if we load this up, uh, this is the introduction uh, from the narrator of the story who is named Iku. Mm -hmm. uh, she stays with you for the entire story. She's basically introducing you to the world uh, and telling you that uh, we need to help solve the death curse and that we're arriving at Port Nyanzaru. Uh, so this is the game as you will jump in. And we're just going to go straight into the tutorial. I know the tutorial isn't... Uh, uh, ever super fun, but it's a good way to introduce to the game. Yeah, it's a good way to, and we to can, express the, uh, the game here. And we can talk about uh, the similarities to the board game. Uh, so, uh, come on, load. Oh, there it is. So we start with the tutorial. All of the quests in uh, Tales from Candlekeep have three different difficulties. Normal, hard, and horrific. And based on the... <laughs> It's, it's, I, mean, it's, I, it, I like this the, is all the based horrific, on Tomb uh, of Annihilation. I mean, you need yeah. horrific, uh, and based on the difficulty, your rewards will go up. Uh, so there's a there is actually a new uh, new mechanic in the video game called the crafting system, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to level up your characters as the campaign goes on, uh, and you you earn materials from the crafting system by collecting chests and using gold to create those materials. And the XP that you earn isn't actually given to the uh, player characters, it's given to the player itself. So as you gain XP, you're gonna earn more, cra you're gonna earn more crafting materials, mm -hmm. and you're also gonna unlock additional hero slots as you go up in level. Uh, so when you play at hard difficulty, you might still get three chests, but it might be 200 gold and more XP. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you, need to, uh, as you need to get more crafting materials, you can go back and try things at different difficulties and try different tactics. And so we got the devil mask for the loading screen. And so this is the tutorial. Uh, so it's going to basically go through and teach the video game player the phases of the adventure system game. So again, this is the uh, this is the hero phase, and you'll see over here you have two actions that you can do. You can move, and you can take an action. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and move Artist Simber, who's our main character right now. You can see he's got an AC of 15, hit points of 8, a speed of 6, which means he can travel 6 squares, and a surge value of 4. Remember how I said when a character dies, when mm -hmm. use a healing surge? Right. Their surge value is how many hit points they're going to gain when they get back up. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and move Artis over here, and we're going to move on to the next phase. So if there was something I wanted to do, if I had a power that's over here that we don't have access to yet because it's a tutorial, mm -hmm. I could use it right now to do something, or I could continue to move because it's showing me the areas that I can move to, or if you're done with your turn, you can either click here for next phase, or you can just hit the space bar. So as you get used to the game, and you're running through, and you know you just want to walk over there and hit space bar, you can just keep going. So now we're going to go into the exploration phase, uh, which for me, the first time I played the alpha was really the moment where I was like, oh man, this is awesome. Because normally <laughs> the exploration phase is going to grab a tile from the, from, the, uh, from the pile and attaching it to the board. But in the video game, we can be a little bit cooler and have oh. it just slam into place. Uh, so now it's talking about monster I, control. I told you yesterday I advocated for the Wilhelm scream <laughs> as a sound effect for the tile, but... I think we should only do it when... Overruled. It's, when it's a tile that has three monsters, because seriously, <laughs> that's where you're going. Uh, so now it's talking about monster control. Basically, whenever you explore a tile, the monsters are locked to you, and they'll only activate on, your char on that character's mm -hmm. uh, turn, unless multiple characters get the same type of monster. And then they'll start to snowball. Right. So, like in the the, the physical board game, you're not actually uh, you are not actually the monsters, but they will go on your turn. Yes. And you will adjudicate for them as as needed. But they have their own sort of engine driving them. But unlike the board game, you don't have to do any sort of management. Right. Like it's not like all right, now I'm in the villain phase. All right, this guy's going to go and he's going to move here, and then he's yeah. going to attack. I'm going to roll. It goes so much quicker because the the game is doing. The It'll bad adjudicate for everything for you. Yeah. So now we go into the villain phase, which if there's a villain on the board, they'll activate it every player's turn. But then if there's other monsters that you control, which you can see, I control that skeleton, mm -hmm. or I, uh, Artis controls that skeleton, uh, it's going to activate this turn. So it's going to run up to Artis and try to attack, uh, and it's going to miss. And you're going to see as the UI starts to open up, uh, there's a play-by-play -play little text box here that'll show you the roles, will show you what uh, effects you're under. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and we're in Dragon Bait's turn. You can see the, the circles uh, flashing around him. And we're going to want to move adjacent to the skeleton. 
And now we're going to talk about combat and the different powers that you have. So during your turn, as you take actions, uh, you can, and it's not going to show me this, but we can talk about it a little bit later. You can take, you can do different uh, uh, abilities. And mm -hmm. here it's going to want me to use the Holy Avenger. Uh, <laughs> it's a plus nine to attack. Mm -hmm. It deals one damage, but it deals plus one damage against undead demons or devils. So if this monster were to have two hit points, I could kill it, where if it was not an undead, I wouldn't be able to. So then you choose the power, and then it's going to show you the eligible target squares. Click on the monster you want to kill. I go ahead and killed it. I got two XP. Remember, that's player XP. And then we're going to go on to the encounter phase. This was obviously a challenging tile. So, uh, oh, it, it wasn't a challenging tile. I didn't explore. So since there was no exploration, I found an encounter with the Zabu Mushroom Spores. Each hero on the active hero tile gains disadvantage. That's not great because now there's two of them on the tile, and I don't want them to both get disadvantage. So there's also something called the, uh, the uh, adrenaline system in this game. Uh, it builds, it works off of the XP system, so the further you go, the more monsters you kill, the more adrenaline you earn. Mm -hmm. And you can use adrenaline to cancel uh, encounters, just like you do in the board game. So I'm going to go ahead and interrupt that so we can uh, skip the uh, encounter. Sean's looking at me like I need to know something. Raffle. Oh. oh. Yes. It's a great opportunity. It is a great opportunity. Thank you to Sean for reminding us. We do have codes for two copies of the, the game, Tales yep. from Candlekeep. Let's give away one now and do another one later. Uh, that sounds good. So if folks are interested in uh, participating in the raffle, we'll get that uh, set up. It's open. It All is right. open. Just enter with exclamation point raffle. That'll put you, uh, put you into the raffle. We'll close uh, it in like five Oh yeah, yeah. We'll we'll, right. we'll remind folks along the way. The raffle is open. Just just put uh, enter the raffle in chat. Exclamation point raffle. So this is the adrenaline rush bar, and you'll see that as you gain XP, you get more adrenaline. Each of these smaller blocks are basically one interrupt that you can do to an encounter card. And just like in the base game where you're working with the action economy and the the uh, uh, the, the hit point economy that you have, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with figuring out which encounters you want to cancel is super important in this game. Uh, but you can also use Adrenaline to boost the stats, and it's going to boost the hit points, the AC, the speed, and the surge value of a character for uh, a number of turns. Uh, that's one way, especially if you need to really give them a boost. I like to use it to cancel encounters, but that's just me. <laughs> but for right now, uh, we can go ahead and give an Adrenaline Rush to Artis. Uh, so his, his uh, numbers got boosted, and now we're going to move him over here and explore again. So now we go to the exploration phase. Boom. I just right. like watching the tiles. I know. It's really good. And I, we can't hear it, but it's got this really cool, uh, <laughs> it's got this really cool uh, sound, too. Uh, what do we need from the winners to get their Steam key? Oh, well, uh, if you are a winner, we'll just whisper uh, at you during the chat, and we'll just get you this, the uh, Steam key uh, via the chat. So stick around. Once we're, uh, if you're one of the winners, just stick around after the fact and we'll reach out to you directly. And this is a good point to point out, uh, you know, we're moving around the board and we're kind of zoomed out like it's a board game, but you can actually really zoom into this adventure and see all the craziness that's going on. Uh, and on this, re on this recent tile, we found these lovely D8s <laughs> that are floating around. These are traps. Uh, and if you walk through a trap, you can trigger them and they can deal anywhere from one to four damage at the start. But later on, they might cast spells and do all sorts of crazy stuff. So being able to use actions to disable traps is really important. And that was my question. I can see the trap. Can I deactivate the trap? Yeah, so I think that's what it's going to have us do. So we're going to run Artist over here, or we're going to run Dragon Bait over here, and we're going to disable the trap. And you see the pointer icon changes from the skull pointer to a hand grab. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go ahead and try and disable the trap. And here's the play-by-play. -play. We rolled a six, and we disabled the trap. Uh, so this is the end of the tutorial, uh, but that is... And then we go, and then it says you can finish the adventure. And the tutorial is to, it's tough to read from here. Uh, <laughs> defeat five monsters. So we'll go ahead and finish through the tutorial. So no explanation, uh, we didn't explore, so we're going to get an encounter. And uh, each hero takes damage equal to the number of monsters they control. Well, I'm not going to interrupt that because I don't control any monsters. So mm -hmm. I'm going to let that encounter happen. So I'm just going to hit space and move on. So it's going to go through the animation. If I controlled ah. any monsters, I would get damage, but I don't control any monsters. Uh, so now we're up to Artis's turn. And we're going to run him over here. And we have a bunch of different powers. Remember how I was talking about at-will powers, utility powers, and daily powers? Yes. 
At will powers are powers you can use every single turn and they're never exhausted. They use an action, so you're gonna have to use an action on your turn to, uh, to use them, mm -hmm. but uh, other than that, you can just spam them every turn if they're useful. Uh, they have different attack values, different range, different uh, uh, damage values, and as you craft more materials, the, uh, those numbers will increase to make you uh, more and more awesome. Uh, you also have utility powers. Most of the utility powers don't actually cost an action. They're free actions, uh, and they're things that you can do in addition to your movement and action on a turn. Mm -hmm. And then you have daily powers. These normally cause an action, and they are big AOE, uh, super big hits that you're going to throw at the main monster. And once they're gone, they're gone. They're once not they're like gone. Not, not like the at-wills where you can continue to use them. No, you'll see them grayed out if you can't access them. Mm -hmm. uh, like lightning reflexes, I can only use after I've used an at-will power. But if I were to use the Cone of Cold, uh, which I'll do. Oh, I don't have a target monster. Uh, if I were to use the, the Cone of Cold, it would then go gray for the rest of the adventure. Mm -hmm. There are treasures that I'm going to be able to collect that will uh, allow me to refresh that ability later. Right. So some of the strategy is, you know, maybe using a strong power early with the hope that you're going to be able to refresh it later before the big boss battle. I say we find a monster so we can use a Cone of Cold. On I love it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to explore here. No monsters, so that's good, but we've got some traps. And we've got a little bit of a loop around here, so let's bring Dragon Bait this way. And we'll explore out here. So Dragon Bait's got uh, an ability uh, called Shen State, which can allow him to uh, prevent the next monster uh, from spawning, but we want to kill some monsters, so we're not going to use that. Uh, and again, the raffle, I believe, is still open, so if you're interested in uh, your chance to pick up a copy of the game, just uh, exclamation point raffle in the chat. All right, so we've got our first monster. We've got a Veggie Pygmy. He came over and attacked Dragon Bait, so oh. now Artis has to defend his friend. So Artis is going to run over here. But we love Veggie uh, Pygmies. They're so cute. Sure they are, except for when they're attacking your friend. Uh, all right, granted. So I'm going to use the Careful Shot. It's going to show me all of my, uh, all of my available targets. One, uh, one aspect uh, that we give more free reign in the board game, but we're a little bit uh, more uh, immersive in the uh, video game is these abilities, it says, uh, attack one monster within two tiles. Mm -hmm. With the board game, we'll allow you to make a magical arrow that can take a 90 degree turn and go and go down another hallway. No some ricochet shots. No, no ricochet <laughs> shots here. So you'll see these areas are all areas that uh, artists could see if there's mm -hmm. monsters. So I'm gonna head and attack, and the Veggie Pygmy took one damage. And so now I'm gonna end my turn, but since artist doesn't control the Veggie Pygmy, it's not gonna activate again. We're gonna close the raffle in about two minutes. So if you're interested in a copy of the game, go ahead and put exclamation point raffle and we'll raffle it off in just a minute. Uh, so here we've got another encounter. Again, artist didn't explore. He got a little tied up. Mm -hmm. uh, so that timer continues to push you along. Okay. Uh, so each hero uh, adjacent to an ambush site takes damage. Ambush sites are something new for the uh, Tomb of Annihilation adventure. They are hidden areas where monsters might pop up where you might not expect them. Uh, so you don't actually uh, know where those are. So we could be next to an, uh, an ambush site. I'm not sure. Let's go ahead. We won't interrupt it and we'll see what happens. Oh no. Uh, Dragon Bait was next to an, uh, an ambush site, so he got a little hurt. So now Dragon Bait's up. We're gonna use his Swift Strike. Doesn't have much of an attack bonus. It's only at plus four, but he can attack twice. Mm -hmm. So let's see what's gonna happen. So he'll attack once, and we got him. Don't oh. even need to use a second one. But if I had a second target next to me, I could just flip around and uh, uh, do it again. I'll be honest, I was rooting for the Veggie Pygmy. Oh, well, you're, that's weird, but okay. <laughs> it's not like it was a Zorbo, man. <laughs> Koopa Louie. There's Kawasha <laughs> and Koopa Louie. Sure. Uh, that's another thing, too, that, uh, uh, let's see, you are being watched. The closest monsters to the active hero gains advantage. Sure, let's, uh, we'll let uh, Dragon Bait take a little beating. So the skeleton's going to come up and attack Dragon Bait with advantage. Uh, and if you noticed uh, a second ago, I actually spun the board around. Uh, you'll see, depending on your angle, uh, some of the trees will disappear to kind of give you a better visual view. And you'll see when we go into the tombs later, that's actually really helpful because they're trying to they're trying to immerse you in the environment mm -hmm. uh, in throwing up all this jungle vegetation. But they want to make sure you don't uh, block out your view. So you'll see there's still outlines of characters over here. But right. if you need a better view or you want to see if there's a, a treasure around the corner, you can kind of scoot your, uh, your screen around. So we're going to go ahead and take out this. Uh, oh, wait, no, it's Artis's turn. So we're going to move him up to here. Do, 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 do. And we'll shoot the skeleton. All right. Down goes skeleton. Yes. And because this is a the tutorial, we're not actually collecting treasure. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, jump out of here. So we're gonna go back to the main menu. Okay. Uh, and congrats to Manalishi sixty six. Oh, we've got our we've uh, got our, our first, first raffle. winner. Yes. We've so got our first uh, raffle winner. we'll go ahead and whisper you a copy of the code. You can go to Steam and go to activate a product on Steam. Put that code in, and you'll be able to jump right into Chult. All right. Well, congratulations. Uh, we've got one more code that we'll be giving away in a little bit. We'll open up a second raffle. Again, thanks for everyone for, for participating. Uh, so that was the demo from uh, Tales from Candlekeep, uh, exploring a little bit of the jungle. Now, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but we also wanted to dive a little deeper into the game to showcase some of the actual tomb environments yes. as well. Uh, so as you can see, this is the main game that I've been playing since release. I'm at level 14 right now. Uh, I've gone through a little bit of the adventure. All the skulls are areas that I've uh, completed. And you'll see the purple areas are areas that I've completed at horrific difficulty <laughs> because I'm that awesome. But <laughs> no, I died a lot to do that. Um, uh, but you can go ahead and once you get down here at this part of the uh, of Chult, you're actually in the Tomb of the Nine Gods. Mm -hmm. And I want to take a moment before we get into the tomb to look at the crafting system. So as you collect chests, you collect uh, uh, materials for uh, for crafting. And if you create, if you craft uh, main weapons for any of the characters, each of them has a bunch of different weapons that you can do. Uh, they will increase all of your at will powers by plus one. That's attack and damage. Uh, if you do a secondary weapon, mm -hmm. it'll increase your daily powers by plus one. Armors will increase your armor class and hit points, which for Ashara, you definitely want to do, because uh, I don't know if you knew, but wizards are squishy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they tend to be, yes. Uh, accessories will bring up your utility powers, uh, and uh, you can also see the inventory of things that you've collected. And if you have something uh, that your character isn't really using, you can scrap it for materials. Okay. Each uh, item costs a certain amount of gold, which you collect during the adventure, and a certain amount, excuse me, a certain amount of materials. So you see I've, I've purchased a couple, or I've crafted a couple of things for, uh, for Dragon Bait and uh, Ashara in these adventures. So I'm going to go ahead and let's do the Juggernaut. Oh. The Juggernaut. Uh, so I'm going to do it at normal difficulty, which will get me 405 gold, three uncommon chests, and 40 XP. And you'll see if I change the difficulty, those numbers go up substantially, but also so does the uh, death quotient. Do not want to go horrific? No, 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 I'm not ready for horrific at this level. <laughs> uh, I might not even be ready for normal at this level. <laughs> so when you start the game, you're actually going to only have one hero slot open. These other three are going to be locked. Okay. And then at level three, four, and five, I believe, uh, they actually unlock. So then you can start to actually fill out your party of adventures. And again, you can choose the hero you want to start with, correct? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they're okay. all unlocked at the start. And, and then you'll be adding the, the heroes to your party as you go along through the game. Yeah, so uh, depending on the adventure, let's say you start with artists uh, in the first adventure, but realize that, ah, these guys hit kind of hard, I want a, a sturdier character. Mm -hmm. So you go with Dragon Bait because he's a paladin. Or you wanted to use a lot of range, so you'll jump in with Ashara. Or you start to unlock uh, uh, multiple slots, and Birdsong's really good at helping the party, so you throw her in. Uh, but just for a little bit of speed of play, I'm just going to go through this uh, as a two-character uh, two adventure. Uh, Tales from Candlekeep is only on Steam right now. Uh, obviously, we're always looking at other platforms, but it has only been released for about five days at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on Steam, but is available for both PC and Mac. Uh, so we're going to go ahead in the Juggernaut, and we're going to go in with uh, Dragon Bait and Ashara, our Aarakocra wizard. And uh, where was uh, where, where did these characters derive from? Uh, these, these tend not to be the typical characters you might see in a D and D a game per se. You know, we've got an Aarakocra, we've got a Tabaxi. Uh, so, so why these characters? So these characters were specifically chosen because of the alignment to the campaign adventure, mm -hmm. the TRPG adventure. Like I said, we start from a core design doc uh, that both informs the TRPG, but also other ancillary licensed product. And we want to make sure that everyone has that shared vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So if it was, you know, if, if these characters in the Tomb of Annihilation board game were characters that you would never interact with otherwise in the Tomb of Annihilation TRPG or content through other areas, it might seem a little weird. So that's right. why a lot of these characters are actually inspired by the TRPG. Uh, the only one that isn't referenced in the TRPG is Birdsong, mm -hmm. uh, who we created exclusively for uh, the, the board game. Uh, but everyone else you'll be able to see in uh, the TRPG. And Ashara, as we continue to spread and create that shared language, Ashara 
Gar is actually a playable character in another video game we have out right now called Idol Champions of the Forgotten mm -hmm. Realms. So Iku, as our narrator here, is uh, talking to us, and we just jumped down to the next level of the tomb, and she's saying that this statue's looking kind of out of place, and maybe we should move our butts. Uh, should we open our next round of the raffle here? Yeah, let's do that, because I've been talking for a while, and we're running out of time. Yes. So let's start the next raffle, and uh, we'll go ahead and leave it open for about five minutes. Again, exclamation point raffle. raffle. Yes. And uh, we'll give away our second and final copy but this game is on Steam right now. You can go ahead and we'll put a link in the chat to uh, the Steam store page. It's available at 15% off right now, and today's the last day mm -hmm. of that uh, launch promotion. So we're going to go through the hero phase. Ashara is going to move over to the edge of the tile to start exploring, because uh, Iku has pointed out that this statue probably isn't very nice. And we've got a zombie and a skeleton, and they're going to come up and attack her. And that is not great, because I forgot to buff out Ashara beforehand. So. We're gonna move Dragon Bait over and he's gonna help out. Uh, Dragon Bait, who I've buffed up a little bit, now does two damage on his base attacks. Uh, he's gonna go ahead and swing there. No, he missed. Swing again. Wham. He got one. And we're gonna get a piece of treasure, a pouch of copper. That's gonna help us to craft items later. Uh, he can't move anymore, so he's not gonna be able to explore, so we're gonna get an encounter. Uh, so the encounter phase, spawn a new monster on the closest empty ambush site. So because we don't know where the ambush sites are, mm -hmm. that's going to be a surprise. Let's see what happens. And it's right there, and it's a Girolan. <laughs> don't worry, guys. It'll be fine. Uh, this is a good point, time to point out that Tomb of Annihilation was based on Tomb of Horrors, the, uh, the uh, original module that uh, tested endurance and the life capacity of adventurers throughout the history of D&D. Uh, you may die. A lot. But part of the flavor, I suppose, of the... Uh, oh, absolutely. Episode. Absolutely. Yasarak is uh, just always up to uh, uh, kill adventures and steal their souls, so uh, <laughs> it plays into it. So Ashara is going to go ahead and try and buff herself up. So she has, instead of an ultimate uh, attack power, I gave her a uh, fire shield, mm -hmm. which kind of turns her into a little bit of a tank. So when I activate fire shield, if anyone hits her, uh, the hit actually misses, and she'll deal one damage back to her. Uh, and I'll go ahead and give her mage armor as well. So I can mage armor either character. I'm gonna mage armor Ashara. And now we'll move into some killing. So we're gonna deal three damage on a hit, so let's see if we can get this Girolan out of the way. All right, so he's only got two hit points. Uh, Dragon Bait will be able to finish that off, so we're gonna explore. So I I'm noticing some strategy you're implementing in the game. Uh, you're, you're breaking off from encounters, you're, you're not fearful of exploring. Are, are there any general tips you might offer as uh, folks go through the game themselves? Yeah, the thing is you, you, don't wanna, you don't want the game, you don't want the monsters to snowball on you. So you mm -hmm. need to try and do whatever you can to manage the monsters you have on the board, but also continue to explore. Because remember, if you don't explore, the encounters are gonna keep hitting you. Mm -hmm. And you've only got so much adrenaline to cancel those encounters. So like Ashara just did, she cleared out a monster and she explored. Yes, she's now got another monster to deal with, but uh, she may or may not have an encounter to deal with as well. And the whole goal of the game is to continuously explore and mm -hmm. move forward. And so the monsters and the encounter system are, on, are that timer mechanic to keep you going. So manage the monsters, keep moving to manage the encounters. Yep. Uh, so here we've got another, uh, another uh, encounter for damage if you're adjacent to an uh, ambush site. We've got two monsters on the board, so I don't want to deal with that, so I'm going to ignore it. Uh, but we've got a Terra Folk, and also the Stone Juggernaut just oh, woke up. There we go. And if anyone remembers the uh, Elephant Juggernaut from the original Tomb of Horrors module, there's going to be some squishy go going on. <laughs> uh, just a quick reminder again, we've got our second and final raffle open. If you would like to uh, enter for your chance to win a copy of the game, exclamation point raffle. We'll and close that up in a couple minutes. As we get to the last 10, point, uh, 10 minutes of the chat, if anyone has any questions about uh, the game design on the adventure system, mm -hmm. on Tomb of Annihilation, Anything that we can help answer, uh, I'd love to take this opportunity to do so as I run through things. Uh, so Dragon Bait is cool in that if he has a stat negative status condition on him, at the start of every turn, he can clear one out. So right now he's currently bleeding uh, and he's stunned. Stunned means that you lose your uh, one of your actions that you get to do on a turn. Mm -hmm. So it's not really good. So I'm going to leave the bleeding because he's got some hit points and I'll take away stunned. So now that it's Dragon Bait's turn, he's got two monsters close, and we've got this Swift Strike, which I've 
uh, crafted uh, additional weapons for. So now instead of a plus four, it's a plus five to attack. And we're gonna see if we can get lucky. So we'll attack the gear on first. Oh no, I missed. Oh, oh I could, oof. I'm gonna do it again. Try to finish him off. All right, we got the gear on. Four XP, oh. I'm close to my next chest. And I got, I didn't get, I didn't see the pop-up. Uh, oh, I got seized the moment. So I gained an action. So sometimes you get fortunes, which aren't treasures, mm -hmm. uh, but seize the moment gives me an additional action, which is awesome, because I got a guy right here that is up in my face and I want to take him out. So I did three damage to him. He's only got one damage left. Instead of sitting here, I'm gonna move to an edge of a tile again to explore, mm -hmm. because now we explored the tomb. We've got that uh, function complete, but we've also got to find the skeleton key now, which means we've got to find some monsters. So we've got to keep exploring. One other thing to note as we're looking through this, this shows over on the right side, this shows you the, the current active uh, character and any monsters they control. And it also shows you the number of hit, uh, healing surges you have left. So remember, when you're at zero healing surges and your character's down, uh, when it gets to their next turn, they're not gonna be able to come up and the adventure's gonna be get, uh, done. Uh, uh, Manalashi66, uh, our moderator mentions that uh, he hasn't heard from you on uh, Whispers, so reach out and, uh, and let us know if you're there so we can make sure we give you your code. And to everyone else, uh, the raffle is still active, uh, exclamation point raffle and uh, we can get you that second copy of Tomb, uh, Tales from Candlekeep. But I will say, if we don't catch you in the chat right now, uh, we will reach out to you via email as well after the fact, if we can. So. Perfect. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and explore over here, because now we're trying to find a skeleton key. Uh, and again, was, as we're zooming in, there's a ton of stuff going on in these, uh, in these uh, tiles, and we've got an encounter. The closest monster to the active hero gains advantage. Sure, we can take a beating. <laughs> So now we're gonna go to the villain phase. Oh no, it's rolling over Ashara. Uh, luckily, Aww. luckily she had her fire, sh fire shield active, so it did one damage back, but she better move out of the way real quick. Uh, the terror folk is in the way, so she's in big trouble right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, is the Tomb of Annihilation board game compatible to combine with previous adventure system games, such as the Shardalon and... Uh, I think... And uh, Tomb of, and, uh, Temple. Temple? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, um, it, is, uh, it is compatible. Uh, all of the Adventure System games are compatible. You can mix the monsters up, you can mix the heroes up. The, 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 the game system was built for expandability and customization. Which, uh, boy, which calls to mind a Dragon Plus article we should create, which would be sort of a uh, scenario that perhaps uses different tiles from different games. Oh, I like that. We'll, we'll, we'll come up with something like that for folks that might be interested. Uh, Honestly, right. there's probably a ton of that content on Board Game Geek right now. I'm sure there but, is. But <laughs> uh, there's, there's a ton of a ton of players that really enjoy this system, uh, and have come up with awesome homebrew stuff that uh, that we've seen. Uh, so we're still in the villain phase. We're still trying to run away from this uh, from this uh, roller, and we need to find a skeleton key. Uh, so we've got Dragon Bait's turn, and we're going to be able to clear off that bleeding condition now. And also, he's taking quite a beating. That is not good. So let's try to run him a little bit away from everyone because we don't want to get rolled over. And this is in normal mode? This is in normal mode. This would be challenging. This is, this is normal mode right now. I probably should have swung before I ran, but uh, I'm getting distracted. Uh, but this is a good opportunity to show off one of the highlights of Ashara. Uh, the closest monster gains advantage. Let's interrupt that because we're almost done and out of time here. Oh no, Ashara. Also, notice Crunch. the stone roller rolled over that zombie for me. Ah, so, right. uh, so they are not immune necessarily to some of the effects of the dungeon? Monsters are immune to traps, mm -hmm. but no one is immune to a giant 10-foot stone roller <laughs> coming down. Uh, so that's one way that you can help to manage this adventure, and the first time you see it, you're like, oh my god, I need to position them well. So maybe standing right here, so this skeleton moves up to here and then gets crunched. Is, uh, Taking advantage of the environment is a hallmark of Dungeons and Dragons. Absolutely, I heartily support and endorse that. Idea. So remember, I talked about these uh, these uh, traps over here. Yes. If you walk over them, they might trigger and they might do damage. Right. But Ashara has a special ability. She flies, mm -hmm. and so she is just going to fly right over that trap and dodge it. And now she's going to be able to grab a chest. Ah, oh, those flyers. And there are chests sprinkled throughout the dungeon. Mm -hmm. Remember how when I got into this adventure, there were three chests if I was able to complete it. If you open this chest, and this is, I think, a rare chest, 
Uh, not only will you get an in-game item that you can use right now, a healing potion, a potion of heroism, uh, a cloak that'll allow you to dodge, also you'll get an additional chest of materials at the end of the adventure. So there's, a, a, again, going back to that action economy of the game, it's do I chance going to go get that chest right now uh, or do I uh, or do I keep going to try and get the adventure done? Because if you can't complete the adventure, it doesn't matter how many chests you got, you got to start over. Ah, I like it. Uh, and again, uh, the raffle has closed. Congratulations to Grave Mistakes. Uh, <laughs> this is the perfect adventure for you, Grave Mistakes. I was going to say, that was a great character name or an encounter name for something in the uh, Tomb of Annihilation. But uh, congratulations to both of our winners. We'll look to reach out to you in whispers and chat. Uh, to make sure that you get codes for your copies of Tales from Candlekeep. Thanks for everyone for, for participating, though. Uh, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll run through a bit more of the game here so we can yeah, at least we... showcase uh, a few more minutes uh, of uh, Tales from Candlekeep. Yeah, I'm going to keep playing, but is there anything you need to go over at the end since we are getting to the end of our time? <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, as you kind of run through the adventure and we get close to the top of the hour, I'll just run through a, a bit of information. Again, uh, the... Tomb of Annihilation Adventure System game, the physical board game from WizKids releases on October 18th tomorrow. Uh, there's actually two editions of this board game. We haven't spoken about that, but there's the standard edition, uh, which if you're used to um, adventure system games in the past, they, they tend to have uh, you know the, the minis that you're used to. But there's also a premium edition, which introduces uh, fully painted miniature options. Uh, in addition, Tales from Candlekeep, Tomb of Annihilation, the, the digital game which you're watching right now, is, is available right now. It's from Becom Studios. Uh, it is available on Steam. It is the last day for your 15% off uh, sale on Steam as well. If anyone was in Seattle during uh, PAX Prime, you might have had a chance to, to demo the game. Uh, in any case, uh, Becom Studios, they are doing a bit of live streaming as well Ooh. to further showcase the game. Uh, we have one this week, oh, Thursday no. at 2 p.m. Uh, and ongoing, they're looking to live stream uh, on Fridays at 12 p.m. And you can always find them on their, uh, their Twitch channel, Tales from Candlekeep. So I want to take a moment here. I found the Devil's Mask. That's the way to oh. get out, which is great for, uh, for Dragon Bait. Uh, not so great for Ashara because the roller is in the way. Uh, so <laughs> oh, no. uh, she's in uh, in a bit of a hot spot right now. Uh, but yeah, um, Steam uh, has Tales from Candlekeep out right now. It's fifteen uh, fourteen ninety nine normally, fifteen percent off today. Uh, we are we are getting into a golden age of digital video games as a game producer for the licensing team. I'm super proud of all the games we're putting out right now. We've got uh, we've got Tales from Candlekeep. Uh, from BCOM, we've got Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms mm -hmm. from Codename. Which also streaming on our, our channel uh, also as of last week. Thursday at yep. 1 yep. Uh, Pacific Time. Uh, I, I, I log into that game literally every day. Move my formation around, <laughs> check it again in a couple hours. Uh, it, is, it is so much fun. But we've also got all of our uh, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Editions mm -hmm. uh, from BCOM. We've got Dungeon Chest from Experiment, Experiment 7, seven yeah. uh, in virtual reality. Uh, so if, you, if you're enjoying D&D uh, &D digital games, uh, download them, rate them if you're enjoying them. If you're not, the, the, the groups are, uh, the teams are active on the Steam channels. Uh, if, you're, if you come up with any bugs, let them know they're, they're active, they're uh, doing updates. In fact, I was just talking to BCOM. Uh, they did an update last night for a couple of quick bug, bug fixes, uh, and they've got a new UI update coming uh, that's actually going to show you the percentage chance to hit when you go to attack a monster. Uh, so when, uh, when I would go ahead and uh, move on to the next uh, character, if Dragon Bait was gonna use one attack versus another, I could click the attack quickly and see what my percentage uh, chance to hit a monster would be. So if I did this, it would hover like 83% or 54%, and I could make a better informed decision on how best to go about it. Uh, so they're really excited about that UI update, and this is a game that's been out literally for five days, and they're already, uh, based on feedback they're seeing on the Steam forum, uh, they're responding to every comment, uh, and uh, all, of our, all of our licensees are, are super, uh, uh, conversive with our audience, which we really enjoy because we try to be as well. 
so, so again, yeah, Tales from Candlekeep on Steam and uh, Tomb of Annihilation from WizKids at your friendly local gaming store. Uh, for, for Dragon Plus, as mentioned, issue 15 on board games uh, is out now. You can subscribe on Android or iOS. Awesome article from someone. From Chris Dupuy had an article <laughs> in there as well. You can also find it, as always, on dragonmag.com. Issue 16, we're looking at some storytelling features. Uh, we're looking to get that out on October 26th. On Thursdays, we try and release the last Thursday every other month. Uh, we've got some fiction pieces from past issues of, of Dragon that we'll be including. Uh, Henry Melton's Catacomb, uh, Dean Edmonds' Thief on a String, some fiction we're, we're considering as well. Uh, we're looking at introducing some of the um, uh, character sheets from some of our live stream characters as well. Uh, and as always, lots of uh, great ongoing content. So October 26th for the next issue of uh, Dragon Plus. For our live stream viewers, as always, thanks for everyone who has tuned in to watch. Thank you to our subscribers. Uh, today we have D&D News will be coming on at 3.30. There is not a dice camera action game today because they are traveling to TwitchCon and uh, there will be that uh, DCA game coming at uh, TwitchCon itself. Oh no, Bart. I found the mask, but now I need to find the skeleton key. Oh. Oh no. Are you gonna make it? No, I know, I'm totally not gonna make it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm totally dead now. Like, I've got the roller right here. There's. There's no hope. I, but it's a, it's a great way to end a look at uh, <laughs> the Tomb of Annihilation. There we go. There he is. There's the skeleton key. Oh, I love it. Ugh. <laughs> so there's there's a chance. I know we are uh, we are up at time. I don't know. Do we want to see the end? Do you have any? No, let's run through. All let's, right, let's, let's see what we can do. Let's do a couple more minutes and see if we can Oh, get, no. Uh... Dragon Bait's down, but I still got two healing surges. <laughs> oh, no. Char is down. We're going to use both of our healing surges. Actually, Dragon Bait, as a paladin, I gave him a utility power called Last Stand. So he's going to wake up once at one hit point without using a healing surge. Uh, so let's see what we can do. All right, where is that? Uh... So Chris is back against the wall here in the Tomb of Annihilation. If you're, you're tuning in now, this is Tales from Candlekeep, Tomb of Annihilation. Oh, no, I had disadvantage. I missed with the skeleton. It's not looking good. It's not. Oh, man, let's, uh, let's web this guy so they're not going to come and attack me. Oh, boy. Dragon bait, get up, man. Get up, I've got an encounter, but I've, I've used up all my adrenaline. Aww, uh, so attack each hero on a tile with an unexplored edge. Oh no, this is an unexplored edge. Ah, villain phase. The terror folk is coming at you, everyone's coming at everyone's you. Everyone's coming at me, like I was just trying to rush through at the end. <laughs> Look what happens. All right, so last stand, he used up his utility power automatically. We didn't use a healing surge. We've got this uh, unsuspecting skeleton just sitting here going, hey guys, what's going on? I'm just supposed to attack you. Oh no, what did I do? What have I done with my life? Down goes skeleton. So we've got the skeleton key, but I think I need to use an action to activate it. So we've got to survive one more push. Is this down to the wire if you survive this uh, it, if round? I, if I survive, I'm going to complete the adventure. I'm going to get my chests. I'm going to get to use that other chest. Oh, oh. <laughs> the oh. Just, <laughs> smashes just it rolls you. over me. <laughs> All right, Ashar is up. That was my last healing surge. Uh, let's see. Can we activate it? We did it. Oh. Wow, that certainly was a close one. Yeah, you're telling me, Iku. <laughs> Let's continue on to the next level. So we complete the adventure. Uh, again, we're going to, and I got an achievement, so that's awesome. Uh, for doing the adventure, ooh, they're all the, uh, I think this is common, uncommon, rare, super rare, and legendary. I might mm -hmm. have the terminology wrong, but I've got four rare uh, chests now, so that's awesome. Kapow, kapow, kapow. So I got a bunch of uncommon and rare items. And now I'm going to level up, so I'm going to get another chest. So we've got an uncommon chest. You'll see this has a lot more common stuff in it, not any rare items. It goes through an overview of who your best hero was, but it also goes through the other, summoning, uh, the other heroes. It tells you the time you played, how many monsters, how many explored yeah. tiles. Uh, then you can go back to the map. Uh, oh, I was hoping. Uh, when you have an item that's craftable, uh, there's a little uh, hammer hitting the anvil right here, mm -hmm. so you can jump right in, and it highlights like it'll say, like there'll be a hammer and an anvil right here, mm -hmm. so you'll know there's an armor ready uh, to be crafted, and you can kind of sift through them quickly, so you can judge what's the best thing to craft at the moment. Uh, so I'm having a ton of fun with this game, guys. I, I hope you all uh, do too. Uh, check it out, it's on Steam, and uh, thanks for watching. Yeah, well, thanks for joining us today, Chris, and uh, yeah, to reiterate, thanks for watching, and d, &D News coming on at 3.30. And as always, thanks to Sean behind uh, the scenes this week. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> <laughs>